Michael Lafton is the main protagonist of the FNAF series, being the series' main playable character in FNAF 1, 3, Sister Location, Pizza Sim, and several others that are debatable. This time around, I want to talk about the son of FNAF's greatest nuisance and take a look at everyone's favorite everyman. Michael Afton was born at some point in the 1970s to William Afton and wife Afton. As the eldest of three, Michael grew up to be kind of a rebel and troublemaker, but most importantly, he grew to be a bully to his younger brother, the child that William had refused to name for whatever reason. Michael knew that his younger brother loved visiting Fredbear's family diner, the restaurant their father ran, but he was terrified of the animatronics. So, Michael wore a mask resembling Foxy and played pranks on his younger brother, popping out of corners and scaring him, making him cry and pee his pants like a little bitch. Of course, Michael was also criminally insane for a 13-year-old and managed to convince his friends to also wear Freddy Fazbear masks and help him prank his brother on his birthday. Michael's idea was to put his brother's head into the mouth of Fredbear to really scare him. However, when he did this, Fredbear hadn't had his lunch break yet and bit down on non-applicable's head, which crushed his frontal lobe. Things weren't that funny suddenly, and Michael told his father that he had just accidentally killed his younger brother. William was less angry as he was disappointed, and after running to the hospital with his family, Michael Michael said one last goodbye to his younger brother. By the way, like the week before, his sister had died, so overall not a good month for Michael. Michael was admittedly a troubled soul after the fact, taking up the famous American addiction of sitcoms and a good home life. Michael managed to actually find some semblance of sanity a few years after killing his brother. At some point, Michael witnessed his parents' separation and his father disappeared from his life. Michael would eventually get a call from his father asking him to go see Circus Baby in his underground rental service. Michael would land a job there and begin working. The first night was just training, for which Mike was there for a collective two minutes and wasn't paid. The next night, Mike would start to actually work, coming across Ballora, Foxy, Freddy, Bon Bon, the Bitty Rabs, Mini Rings, Yendo, and Lobit, all without ever actually seeing Circus Baby. Eventually, Michael is instructed by Baby's voice to go to the scooping room, and like the psychopathic nonce Michael is, he followed her instructions. Michael stood in front of the deadly machinery he had witnessed scrap an animatronic the night before, and was somehow surprised to find out he had been tricked. As it turns out, Circus Baby scrapped Ballora the night before on purpose. As each animatronic was scrapped, she combined all their parts to create Ennard, a vaguely human-shaped endoskeleton. Even after hearing a baby's evil plan, Michael does not simply move two feet to the right and ends up being scooped by the scooper. That is to say, a giant metal claw just ripped out his lower abdomen. Ennard used the opportunity to wear the somehow still living Michael's body as a skin suit and started power walking every time he beat a custom night challenge. This is where things diverge from the normal theory, and the normal theory states that Michael literally became herbal as a result of his body decaying. Now, I'm not an expert on decay or anything, I'm just a college student studying that kind of stuff, but I'm pretty sure dead bodies don't ever turn purple like this. I think more likely what's happening is we're seeing a representation of Michael aging. I think we're seeing Michael over the course of years be shunned from his neighborhood for being, you know, creepy and possessed, while he slowly grows to resemble his father more and more. Or maybe he is Erpel, who am I to judge? Either way, it's worth noting that this state leaves Michael looking like William, at least to spirits. Eventually, Ennard, for whatever reason, gets sick of living inside Michael and pukes itself out into a gutter. This should have killed Michael, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't, and he gets right back up. It's at this point Michael makes a statement that he vows to find his father after realizing that, yeah, William Afton was definitely a murderer and he was definitely responsible for all those mysterious deaths. So Michael goes job hunting. His last job had pretty shitty benefits so he applies to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, guaranteed to be a low pressure job for a man his age, which I should mention, he's in his 30s now. Michael wants to liberate the spirits that possess the animatronics, one of which even recognizes him as his brother, but most of the animatronics just see Michael looking exactly like the guy who killed them and try to murder him back. Michael probably realizes he can't get close enough to the animatronics to do anything about it, so he eventually quits his job. Michael would then live for another 30 years of complete and total peace. Then Fazbear Frights happen. Michael sees a help wanted ad for a new Freddy's location, sort of, and joins on as a security guard. Now a 60-something, Michael faces off against his father in a reanimated bunny outfit, and also these hallucinations he's having from all those psilocybin mushrooms he's been eating in his Lucky Charms. Eventually, Michael gets tired of his father's bullshit and burns the building to the ground. This is the first time anyone's ever tried this. 
After believing his father to be gone for good, Michael returned home, but then all the PTSD from his entire life hit him all at once. Michael has routine nightmares from the perspective of his younger brother, who was killed at Michael's own hands. He fends off against nightmarish versions of the monsters Michael had to face his whole life, even a representation of his father, and of course, Fredbear. These nightmares may have been bad enough to put Michael in the hospital, but it's just as likely the meds and IV bag you sometimes see around the bed are actually in reference to the hospital room the crying child was in before he passed. Either way, Michael actively relives all of the trauma of his entire life within eight nights before being able to let go and do what must be done. After a few years, Michael is hired as the manager for a Freddy Fazbear establishment, where he is instructed to bring in every animatronic that would appear in the back alley. He needed them all in one place. These animatronics include his father, his sister, his father's friend's daughter, and a huge pile of scrap that was inside him once. Michael gets into a crawl space to do manager stuff and eventually logs off one last time. However, Scrap Baby starts a villainous monologue about murder that Michael's buddy the tape guy has to interrupt. The tape guy explains that the animatronics have been brought there as a trap as the vents in Crawl Space begin to heat up. He basically tells Michael, I didn't think you'd show up, but I imagine you want to die with these guys, without ever asking. Maybe Michael did want to die. I mean, he's pushing late 60s to early 70s, but the tape guy goes on. He reveals that the puppet is possessed by his daughter, revealing himself to be Henry Emily, who I can only imagine would be in his 80s or 90s by now. Of course, Henry also wants to die, so everything inside the pizza place burns. I really hope the birthday party that was going on in there was cut short. Michael Afton has died. So that would seem to be the end of Michael Afton. Or really, so you might think. There is a popular fan theory going around now regarding Michael's spirit, so I guess I'll cover that. But be warned, everything you're about to see is very much in the air for debate. So while William Afton was busy being dead as f***ing hell, Michael was just regular dead and would stay that way for a while. However, when construction began on Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex, Michael's spirit returned, awakened from his final resting place in the pizza place. At some point, Vanny would bring Glamrock Freddy down to the pizza place, and in doing so presented an opportunity for Michael. Michael would possess Glamrock Freddy, which would also give him a sort of immunity from the glitch trap virus that all the other animatronics were being manipulated by. Michael, now inside Glamrock Freddy, would take responsibility over Gregory, an orphan boy trapped inside the pizza plex. This would explain why Freddy has much more personality than the other animatronics, and also why he has moments of realization. Moments such as when he sees the endoskeleton room and asks if he's even who he thinks he is. Other moments include Glamrock Freddy's oddly violent decision that Vanny should be disassembled like he was, or emotional ones where he seems to actively care for Gregory's safety. Glamrock Freddy pretty much just seems too alive in comparison to Roxy, Monty, and Chica. But the biggest piece of evidence for this theory is Freddy's speech as you descend to the burn trap boss fight. During this monologue, Freddy's voice changes slightly. It's slower, raspier even, and he describes his friends being down here, how being down here changed him, and how, well, in his own words, I did not want to, but I had no choice. Now I have a choice. I have changed. My friends are here. They are so angry, confused. But I can protect you. I am not me. What this means for Michael is currently in the air, as Glamrock Freddy's ultimate fate is unknown. We know he can be powered by a simple car battery, but in pretty much every ending for Security Breach, his fate is left ambiguous, with the exception being the rooftop ending where he actually powers down for good. If this really is Michael Afton, then I don't fuck. No, you think there is any point to Michael even being a character? My biggest gripe with Michael Afton is that he has no reason to even exist in the story. Until Sister Location, we were all content with the playable character of each game being a different person, and that kinda made sense. Someone like Jeremy, they probably died after their five nights. Mike Schmidt lost his job when the place shut down, etc, etc. It was after Sister Location that the FNAF story went from being followable but complex to absolutely ridiculous in arguably the worst way. Sister Location itself is a retcon of a game. Anyway, there is another Michael Afton to talk about. Luckily, he's nowhere near as prevalent as his father is in media outside the games. To date, I believe the only book with a confirmed Michael Afton in it is the Survival Logbook, 
a book actually written from the perspective of Michael. The Survival Logbook is actually a pretty interesting book in comparison to the Silver Eyes and Fazbear Frights, as while those tell more stories, all of their stories are outside the game timeline, whereas this one pertains to info actually in the main series. By far the best part of this logbook is getting direct confirmation of Michael being present for certain events, as well as getting little glimpses into his personality. Michael Afton is shown to be sarcastic and paranoid, as his history of getting haunted for up to six nights at a time show he's been left with some mental scars. This book also gave evidence that Michael is the one experiencing the nightmares in FNAF 4, as he draws Nightmare Fredbear to pretty exact detail. Even though this is basically an activity book, this book oddly enough gives us so much information for like no reason. So that pretty much sums it up. Michael Afton is a fucking weird guy, but at the end of the day, he's better than his serial killing father. Marginally. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell me who you want to see next. That's all out of me. Peace.